Hi there, I'm Alex Clear and I'm here at Hanover Messe 2019. I'm joined by Johan Nilsson from Tetra Pak. Johan, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you. Now, here at, at Hanover Messe, of course, you are exhibiting the main concept, which is the future of factories. Can you tell us a little bit about your future of the factory concept? What we believe is that there is a number of digital technologies that will change manufacturing and we try to put them into practice in a food and beverage industry. So what would artificial intelligence mean? What are practical use cases of that in a factory environment that addresses losses that occur or different types of problems that exist in manufacturing today? So how do you make manufacturing more efficiency by use of these digital technologies? That is our translation of smart manufacturing. And we try to be as concrete as possible. Some of these problems are industry agnostic, so they would be the same for most type of manufacturing like predictive maintenance you know you want to you want to predict the failure before it happens that applies to any type of manufacturing of course some of them are more specific like when you go to food quality and food safety how can you predict these things and how can you keep much better process control of course by understanding data and so that is more specific for food and beverage manufacturing and for a company like Tetra Pak and for its customers, one of the main problems is as soon as a package leaves the factory, they have no way of tracking that at mm -hmm. all. And you're doing work in that area to, to resolve that. Yeah, we earlier today launched a, what we call a connected package platform, which builds on that you put an active digital identity onto an individual pack or to a unit of packs, a distribution unit, or onto a pallet maybe, to be able to trace this pallet and package or group of packages wherever they are and through that optimize the supply chain and not build a lot of stock in supply chains etc but also building better ways of interacting with the consumer for different purposes. And the way you're doing that primarily is through QR codes isn't it? Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the yes. efficacy of that versus say RFID and why you're going down that route? So QR codes are available today, that's a technology. You print the QR code and you manage the, the data around the codes. Uh, so that's a technology that's available today. We can either print it on the material before we deliver the material to customers, or we can print it on the packages just as they are made. Uh, RFID is not a technology that is available today at the cost level required to be on an individual package, for example. In the future, maybe it will be. But RFID today could probably work on a pallet level or a secondary package of 24 units or something like that. So, And then you, Tetra Pak and its customers will be taking that data and obviously with the concern around plastics and sustainability, trying to incentivize recycling. Uh, incentivizing recycling is one use case because can you incentivize recycling by giving a consumer uh, something back in return for when they recycle a package? And there are many different ways you can do that, but then you need to make sure who is it that actually recycles the package and that one package is only recycled once, of course. So that's why this unique identity is so important. And do you think that you could use the data on those intelligent packs to improve recycling, increase the amount of packages that consumers actually recycle rather than discard? I think so, because if you understand a bit more where are, where are packages consumed, so you can of course steer where will there be waste bins or recycle bins you know where will that be if people are here primarily when they use the pack then you can make sure that you make it easy for them to recycle by have connected bins at different places where you do collect these yellow bins where you normally return a package and so by understanding where people are when they consume a pack for example and of course connectivity and sustainability are all very well but efficiency remains important mm -hmm. in a plant. Can you tell us how Tetra Pak's latest concepts around intelligent packaging and the, the future of factories is helping manufacturers to improve efficiency? Yeah and it depends a little bit on what type of efficiency but if we, we believe in a future where there will be much more product variety for example so much more SKUs, you know, per products a little bit more individualized to your needs and my needs. And when you have that and you have the current manufacturing processes and current supply chain processes, you will build a lot more inventory and working, tie up working capital. By having connected packages so you know where they are all the time, you can have this inventory moving from the, from the place of manufacturing to the point of sale and you don't need huge warehouses to tie up capital in because in those unlikely moments, few occasions where there is a problem with something, you know exactly where it is so you can take it back there before it reaches consumers of course.
And with greater personalization comes greater numbers of SKUs and greater yes. volumes. How do you cope with those challenges? <laughs> yeah, we just have to have quicker changeovers in factories. You have to be able to run shorter runs with the same type of efficiency. So, you know, the startup time for one order run must be a lot more efficient. So the change over time, we use a lot of data and this type of technologies to shorten the change over time between two orders, for example. Because if you ran an order one million packs before, if an order in a year or two is 500,000 packs only, then you will have twice as many changeovers. And changeover is always lost time and problems occur at changeovers and these. So by shortening those and using these type of technologies in data in making sure that you are you keep the process under control when you shorten the time and so on. And another of the things you're doing is partnering up with another Swedish company, ABB. Can you tell us about your collaboration? Uh, yeah, we launched this collaboration with ABB earlier this week and it's, it's very much around that we have a lot of knowledge and skills and experience in food manufacturing and the process around food manufacturing and we supply a lot of the technology around that. ABB has other experience, like they know a lot about energy consumption and what drives energy consumption. So in our desire to reduce costs for our customers and make our customers more efficient, energy is a big source of that, of course. And when we reduce energy, we reduce cost and we reduce load on the environment as well, of course. So um, we go together to customers to understand how much energy are they consuming for this given production or this volume they have in a factory. We learn in those type of cases that on a Sunday when they produce nothing, the factory still consumes 50% of the energy and these type of things. So a lot of like these things like you do in smart homes, you know, when you connect devices, so yes, creates transparency on what is it that consumes energy. And then through benchmarking with others, you kind of go give customers the opportunity then to change technology to a more energy efficient motor or something. And then there is always a business case on each of those things, of course, uh, for cost reasons and for environmental reasons. Okay. When I was here at Hanover Messe two years ago, yeah. your job title was being promoted as VP of Tetra Pak Services, and yeah. now you've snuck the word digitization in there. <laughs> does that reflect the growing importance of digitization Absolutely to Tetra Pak? Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. And indeed to its customers? Absolutely. Absolutely, it does. And it's also an indication of that we do it in this Sweden collab of that we don't believe that we can solve all these problems alone. So that we will make joint forces with both large companies and small companies to provide better solutions to the food and beverage industry. That is our ambition and the plan ahead. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you very much.